If you are a maker that starts projects but struggles to finish them, this video is for you. And if you are a maker that is super motivated and ready to build something awesome but have zero ideas, this video is also for you. Today I will share with you the system I use to come up with ideas and to make sure that I go from idea to finished product as quickly as I can. I had an idea for a simple app that could help developers and I wanted to challenge myself to see if I could still build products with the very limited time I have because of my newborn daughter. Thanks to the systems I'm about to show you, I was able to make it happen in six days, only working on it from Saturdays and Sundays from 5 a.m. to 11 a.m., which is when I don't work on my main product and when the baby is asleep or hanging out with her beautiful mom. It would have taken me less time if it wasn't for the abstract submission process that I forgot how much I hated. But the point is, the systems work. The app I'll show you later is now live in both app stores and I'm already working on my next one. Coming up with ideas of products to build was something I struggled with until I changed my mindset in a simple but powerful way. Before, I asked people for ideas because I had none of my own. And I thought ideas are something so precious. You had to keep them secret if you had one. Now I'm overflowing with ideas. I give them away. I struggle choosing one idea to work on because I wish I could build them all. And the most mind-blowing thing is that when I find that someone has already built an idea I had and executed it better than I could, I don't feel jealous. I'm glad because it feels like a weight lifted off my chest. That is not because I got suddenly more more creative, but because I stopped looking for ideas and I started looking for problems. Once you stop hoping an idea magically pops into your head, and instead you start looking for problems, you will constantly notice problems that need fixing and you will wish you had the time to fix them all. Realize that the world is full of inefficiencies. Tons of people do manual tasks that could be done faster or automated. And before you comment and say it's all irrelevant because of AI, if you actually think about it, AI is creating even more opportunities and problems to fix. For example, developers use AI to write code. That code may have security issues. You can now build an AI code scanner that checks that code. Or students use AI to write their papers. Teachers now need an AI to check if the paper is written by an AI. And students now need another AI that humanizes papers and makes them undetectable. Those are just some examples, but you get the point. There are problems everywhere. You just have to look for them. See if you have a friend that runs a small business. They will have plenty of problems they wish were automated. Or they may be using software they wish they could customize. It does not really matter if the problem is not something millions of people experience. Don't let that stop you. Fixing a problem for 500 or 1000 people is better than doing nothing at all. And if you find a problem to fix, don't immediately Google it and find if someone has already solved it. Instead, let the idea marinate in your head. Chew on it. Because even if there is already a product in the market, if you give the idea time to grow, chances are you will find a different angle or a better way of solving the problem. The coolest thing of all is that while building a solution to a problem, you will find other problems on the way. For example, I just published an app on the App Store and I hated every second of it. I hated taking screenshots, making terms of service, designing icons, writing the privacy policies, setting up support emails, etc. That made me realize that maybe there are other developers that hate that as much as I did. Maybe I can build a tool to generate screenshots from the command line, a GPT to write privacy policies, or a website that automates app submissions to multiple app stores at the same time. Some of those already exist, but they were either hard to find, didn't do the job quite well, were too complicated, too general, or too expensive. Those are all ideas in my ideas list. But if any of you watching wants to build any of those, I would love you for it. To make sure that you finish your projects, you need to be aware of what you're fighting against, what your biggest enemy is, the comfort of the unfinished project. The comfort of the unfinished project is an incredibly seductive place, a place that will trap you if you let it a place you need to visit but leave as fast as you can. People start projects so often because starting projects is fun. You get to go to a nice coffee shop, use the latest framework you've been wanting to try, and you get to upload a photo to Instagram to show everyone how cool you are for coding in a Saturday afternoon. Starting a project gives you the illusion of productivity, which is intoxicating but not real. Keeping the project unfinished is also comfortable. When the project isn't done, it has unlimited potential. It isn't a failure yet and it could be a success. For all you know, it could be the next unicorn that disrupts entire industries. Potential is exciting because it means your product hasn't failed yet. And it is much more motivating to keep adding more and more features rather than cutting down features, prioritizing and bug fixing. Finishing something is uncomfortable. First, because it's boring. After you complete the main exciting features you wanted to build, then comes the change password and forgot username screens no one wants to make the refund policy, or the terms of service page the app stores need you to make. The screenshots, icons, translations, ugh. 
Finishing is also uncomfortable because it makes you vulnerable. It opens you to external criticism and internal self-doubt. We keep postponing marking the project as finished because once we do, people will judge our creation. Developers aren't exposed to that feeling often, but they should be, like chefs, for example. Chefs spend time and love making a dish, but it does not mean anything if the dish never leaves the kitchen. Finishing a project means inviting the public to enter your restaurant and tasting what you've made, which isn't comfortable, but it's something you need to do as often as you can. As I make this video, I could be afraid that you will download the app I made and find a bug on it. That makes you think I'm not a good coder and a fraud. But the truth is that I don't really care. First, because I built the app in six days. Second, because it solves a problem that only me and maybe a hundred other developers have. So I don't expect millions of downloads. But most importantly, because it is not the critic who counts. That saying comes from an essay by Roosevelt titled The Man in the Arena that I like to remember when I have self-doubt. The essay says that it is not the critic who counts. The person that points out where you stumble or the things you could have done better deserves no credit. It is the person in the arena who counts, the person who's trying something, making mistakes, falling and standing up. It is you, the maker, the one trying to bring value to the world, not the person critiquing from the sidelines. What the cynics who haven't finished a single product in their life say about your idea or product should be of no concern to you. There is no shame in making, whether it is a silly app, a course, a book, a bunch of videos, a Notion document. As long as you are adding value to the world and making useful things, you should not care about what people on the sidelines have to say. Before someone writes a rebuttal in the comments, of course, I'm not saying you should not listen to feedback. Chefs need to know if their dish is too salty and you need to know if your product could improve. I hope you understand there is a difference between listening to user feedback and listening to cynics and con the people. Life is so rich if you choose to see it that way. Ignore ignore the critics and the cynics. I built products before. Most of them failed. Some of them got real customers. And one was even acquired by a competitor. It wasn't a lot of money, but it was pretty cool. And trust me when I tell you that the feeling of making your first internet money is such a rewarding experience that I wish everyone feels at least once in their life. Now onto the system. To make sure I don't spend too long in the comfort of the unfinished project, I imagine the project that I am making as a painting I want to speed run. I don't play video games, but I know there is a concept called speed running, where people try to finish games as quickly as they can. They don't do side quests or talk to NPCs and only focus on the tasks they need to do to finish the game. Following this idea, I also try to speed run the making of the project and I do it as if I was painting a picture over many layers. Before starting, I write down the core feature of the project and I break it down into tasks I can finish in an hour or less. Then I apply the first layer that is implementing every single mini feature on that list, but in speed run mode. That means I write the ugliest code you have ever seen. Zero modules, all in one file, no composition, no error handling, no CSS, no UI, nothing. Starting this way means I will have to spend time later cleaning the code, moving it to other files and making abstractions. But the advantage of starting like this is that I get momentum behind me quickly and momentum is like a snowball. Speed running the main feature means I will get to a functioning prototype really fast, rather than starting slowly to figure out what the perfect border radius and background color is for the button in the login form. I get small quick wins that motivate me to keep going. That is the first layer of paint, the main feature completed, but with bad code and ugly UI. The second layer is the secondary features, the login and change password forms, the edit comment forms, all the unsexy things. Again, I write them down and break them into small tasks I can speed run in an hour or less. Here you can use the Cy Garnick effect that I talked about in a previous video to your advantage. Like a painting, as you keep adding layers on top of each other, you will eventually finish the big picture and focus on the small details, like cleaning the code, making the UI pretty, and doing all the boring stuff you need to actually finish the project. The last 5% of all projects is boring and sucks, but you will have all the momentum you've built behind you, helping you push through the pain of boredom. To increase your chances of finishing, there are a few things you can do. First, don't tell anyone about what you're making or tell everyone about what you're making. Let me explain what I mean. Sometimes when you tell others about your project and all the things you have planned and how great it is going to be, your brain gets a sense of accomplishment without having actually done any of the work. You get the wow, amazing and good job from your friends before writing a single line of code. That short term gratification will not last enough to push you through the finish line when things get boring. So if you're that kind of person, try to delay that gratification and work in silence, grind quietly, and then surprise everyone when you're done. On the other hand, some people need others to keep them accountable. If you're like that, then tell absolutely everyone what you are going to do. 
even bet money on it with your friends. To create social pressure that pushes you to finish and not look inconsistent or lazy in front of your friends. Second, don't aim for perfection. Aim for an MVP, a minimum viable product. Reduce your idea to its most important and central feature. Cut as much fat as you can and whatever is left will be your version number one. If you are not embarrassed by the first version of your product, you've launched too late. Third, define what finished looks like and by which date before you even start. As you build your MVP, you will inevitably come up with other features that you think are cool and will want to add. Do not include them in your MVP. Instead, write them down somewhere and promise yourself you will implement them later. If you get X amount of users or if you make X amount of money first, it is very important that you feature freeze your MVP. If you don't, you will end up adding feature after feature, extending the project forever, moving the deadline and burning out. Once you start the project, the feature set and deadline are set in stone. So act accordingly. And finally, start small. Practice finishing small projects often. The more you finish, the more confident you become, and that emboldens you to solve more complex and bigger problems in the future. If you start trying to build something enormous on your first try, you may burn out, which will discourage you even more and set you two steps back. Building something small is what I did this time. I was not sure I could finish an app while learning how to be a dad and recording the SQL Masterclass course at the same time. So I chose the smallest problem I could fix in my problem list, and I built an app to fix only that. I also knew I wanted to see how React Native evolved since I have to update the React Native Masterclass course anyways and I wanted to take Supabase for a ride. Following the speed running system I described earlier, in three weekends, plus one more spent in just signing up, registering and uploading the apps to the App Store, I ended up with Push. Push is an app that developers can use to send push notifications to themselves. After downloading Push and enabling notifications, developers will get a unique endpoint that looks like this. Then whenever something happens in their backend, they can send a post request to that endpoint with a title and body in JSON format, which will send them a push notification to their phone. That's it. It may be the simplest app ever made. You can use push to be notified when a webhook is called or when a cron job runs, when a user signs up to your website, builds a form, when you make a sale or whatever. I use it to get nice little doses of dopamine every time someone joins Nomad Coder, to know when a health check fails and to know when an email campaign was sent among other things. The free plan includes 1,500 notifications per day and three day notification history. And following what I preach, it is an MVP and does not have any extra features or other plans because the point was to finish and not to build the next Instagram. I built this thing to prove to myself that I could still build stuff, even while busy with a new baby. And because I needed something small to get me back into the game of making things and finishing them. But to my surprise, some people are already using it without me having promoted it at all. I count that as a success. So check it out if you want. I only tested it in iOS, but I am pretty sure it will work well in Android as well. Using this momentum I've got behind me, I started to work on another app that also fixes another problem I had, not as a developer, but as a dad. It will of course be bigger than push. I like it much more and it is super rewarding and fun. Let me know in the comments if you would like me to do something like a building in public kind of thing and to take you along the process of building something from start to finish. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.